Greetings to all. A warm welcome to all of you. I will bring you today and a couple of more meditations of women of the Bible. You are loved and to pray with them. I'm going to give you a couple of them and today we're going to start with Johanna and Julia. This is your pastor Yeti. Dorcas was a disciple of Christ and maybe it's good to have your notebook or a paper or whatever you have close to you that you take notes especially the scripture that I will give to you so that you can study it by yourself it's the first scripture is from acts chapter 9 Priscilla with her husband Aquila were fellow workers with Paul who risked their lives for him and continued having Bible studies in their home. Acts 18, Romans 16, verse 3, Corinthians 16, verse 19, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 19. Nymphia taught Bible studies in her home. Colossians 4, 15. Lydia, who was baptized by Paul, had opened her home to him on several occasions. Acts 16, 11 to 15 and verse 40. And Lois and Eunice, Timothy's grandmother and mother, were acknowledged for teaching him the faith. 2 Timothy chapter 1 to 5. Phoebe was commended as a servant of the church in Sancria and to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of saints, giving her any help she needed, for she was a great help to Paul. Romans 16, verse 1 to 2. Mary worked very hard for the church. Acts 16, verse 6. Trophina and... Tryphosa, with Persis, worked very hard for the Lord. Rufus, mother, was chosen in the Lord. Julia, Nero's sister, and Olympus, who Paul says to greet with all the saints, the women in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Acts 1, 14. And Mary the mother of John Mark, whose home was used for prayer, spread the gospel of Christ. Acts 12, 12. Chloe's household reported to Paul the distresses in Corinth, pleading several topics by disgust. 1 Corinthians 1, 11. And the apostles were accompanied by their wives. 1 Corinthians 9, 5 Philip had four daughters that prophesied. Acts uh, Acts, Acts 21, verse 9 And Eodia and Sintege were two women who continued at Paul's side and who contended but were at odds with one other. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but scriptures point to women who were touched by Christ, labored with the Apostle Paul, and companioned their husbands on mission trips, thought Bible studies, worked hard in their communities and churches, had prayer vigils, and opened their hearts and homes to the apostles. Women were valuable in the spreading of the gospel as part of the first church. I probably talked a while ago about a woman named Priscilla. 
a women teachers, a diaconess, and a woman servant in the church, and a women churches, servants in the church. Her is an excerpt from chapter 16. The Lord put on my heart to write, Teaching the Word of God is a blessing, a joy, and a challenge. The time to prepare the teaching, following the promptings of the Spirit, praying and seeking the wonderful Counselor's guidance, takes dedication. Many are called, but few are chosen to take the time for training. The Apostle Paul instructs Timothy for teachers, diaconesses, and servants of the Most High. Now, the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, Hospital, able to teach, not giving to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome. With another word, don't gossip. Not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that the children obey him with proper respect. He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceived and fall under the same judgment as the devil. By other means, when you call in a special way, going in a mission, which the, the, the Lord will call you in whatever region you live, a young convert can become too much in the ego, which he or she will make her proud that it's all about her or him. Well, that's not the case. So, he must or she must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he or she will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 to 7. 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 4 to 6 reads, On the contrary, we speak as man approved by God to be untrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please man but God, who tests our hearts. Approve means to be have a favorable opinion of or to give confirmation that something or someone is satisfactory. When Paul writes he she should not be a new convert, there needs to be a season of learning, testing, studying, listening, and praying. The Spirit moved Paul into the desert of Arabia, according to Galatians chapter 1, 17 to 18. Think of the work God had to do in Paul before he could spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul was called, but he was a man who was zealous for the house of God, but in a murderous and teacher's way. He was looking to the Vur Christians on the road to Damascus to arrest and charge them with a crime. Acts chapter 9 verse 1 and 2. And watched as Stephen was stoned to death, giving his approval. Acts 8 verse 1. This Saul needed to be changed to our Paul. And do you think that you have a different life on that? I don't say that you have the same life that Paul had, no. But before we are in a proper way trained, we will also know why we preach the gospel and for what reason. It's not about us, it's about bringing the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, what happened during those nights in Arabia? What happened during the night as the apostle had to remember how he encouraged death and provoked fear into the hearts of Christians? Did Paul weep in sorrow remembering the death of Stephen, God's chosen on the harsh treatment of Christians he persuaded? How did the Lord change this 
ravenous man of hatred, to write the gentlest, loving, encouraging, and heartful scriptures in the Bible. Preparation. Like Paul, it could be in the Arabian desert you may find yourself. Those nightly westering matches with God, convicting your heart, pushing you toward your goal, and teaching you as ways are painful, but necessary. How can we be approved, preparing, but not be tested? I encourage you, fight the good fight and finish your race strong. For as Mordecai told Esther, the Lord will find another to save his people if she didn't rise to her occasion. The Lord will find someone willing to submit, step through the fiery furnace, and be molded into the image of Christ. You be that strong, bold, and courageous woman of God. Johanna and Julia were women who spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were entrusted with a precious gift from above. The women labored hard for the Lord, using their gifts and talents for His kingdom. They were bold, courageous, and stood on the word of God, no matter the obstacles present. Johanna and Julia represent every Christian woman witnessing to a dark world. The Lord honors and blesses His daughters today. You hear what I'm saying? The Lord honors and blesses His daughters today. For they are light in a dimly lit world. And my prayer is, you are that light, shining bright and drawing women into their King. So let us pray and confess the word of the living God. Adonai, my Lord, I believe and I believe very strongly I am called to teach, but also to be a shepherd, and most of all, to love and to touch. I believe that I have a heart opened to those who need to hear the word of God through transparent testimony. I desire to be a woman approved by you and trusted with this precious seed of Christ and to go and tell. I do not want to be a people pleaser, nor do I want to be afraid of revealing my testimony for fear of what others will say. Christ was unashamed before his own, and I pray for the same open spirit to reveal all the Lord as removed from my life. I pray for a season of testing, studying, learning, gleaning, and growing in the wilderness. And I understand I will be held to a higher standard, but I am willing to be a jar of clay. As it is written, I desire to let light shine out of darkness, to hold this treasure of the gospel, spreading truth, transparent and open. I am willing to be hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed and broken, yet not crushed. Show me, my beloved Lord, how to be a woman who can openly share truth to reveal how you changed a willing spirit, to remove all deception from the enemy fighting the spiritual warfare in the heavens. My heart loves the women coming into the church from the world. Show me how to reach their hearts, to share the gospel of Christ to their understanding, to not turn them away, continually point their sin out while I have a speck in my own eye. 
I do not want to be a hypocrite, but love the ones who see, who so need a doctor, to know you and the power you have to save them. Prepare me to be a follower of you, to give you all my heart, and to those you entrust to me, for prayer, growth, truth, and love. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I pray. Amen. It can be very scary to pray like this. But I will give you this encouragement. God, our beloved Lord, will not abandon you. He is the one who first before we thought we came to Christ, that He already was looking after us. And so He came. And He was crushed to death. But He didn't stay on that place. He rose. For what? For you. And for me. And so, here we are. What will we put in a basket and lifting up as we just prayed? Maybe there is fear, maybe there is questions about God, maybe there is what? Failing what? No matter what, put it all in the basket. And pray that He will make you that woman suitable and for the purpose of his glory a beautiful jar of clay may the love of Christ touch you in a way that you never are touched and if you may be right now in that desert place well maybe you're in just the right place don't be afraid where the soul finds herself in a dark place because here is a very deep work going on with you and God. Blessings, my dear ones. Remember, you and I are loved and no one, no one can take that away from you. Let him love you. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.